from Casino, the pit boss of warmth, Don Rickles. It is now 11 o'clock and I'm fed up and tired. <laughs> Marty, I would address, somebody get a phone book so you can see me. <laughs> Marty, when we see all the films you did, none of them were great. <laughs> none of them. Well, it's, it's true. You know, Bob and I did like eight pictures together. Um, we would put everything we had into each and we'd always be excited about doing the next one. Then we did Casino with Don 20 years ago. <laughs> and we haven't worked together since. <laughs> now it's amazing, it's amazing, Don, the influence you've had on our careers. Yeah, Don, on behalf of Leo DiCaprio, thanks a lot. Marty, you are the most annoying director I ever had. In my <laughs> De Niro is sitting there. God bless you, Bob. He's got the beard on. You, to, to know him is a treat. He's one of the great actors of our time. You ask him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you ask him. He'll tell you. We didn't need a star. We needed uh, just a Jew who would, you know, work cheap and who would we, we could we could bury in a in a bit part, a couple of lines in the background and a few shots, you know, like that. So Jackie Mason wasn't available, so who did we get? Don Rickles. It, it was a true collaboration, right, Don? <laughs> Can I see something. Else? You're supposed to say, I should have known better. I'm saying. <laughs> For the kind of money you're making, what's, read the what's... card. <laughs> Learn the thing. You gotta pop out trailer. <laughs> Sit in there and study. <laughs> with your method acting with the breathing and the bullshit. <laughs> Do the lines and let's get at it. Well, when Bob De Niro and I are on, on the same stage together these days, it's usually to give each other lifetime achievement awards. So we see each other mainly at award ceremonies and memorial services. <laughs> like tonight. <laughs> we wanted to honor your memory, Don, so here we are. <laughs> Though, if I'd been directing this, I don't think I would have gone for the open casket. <laughs> Rest in peace, old friend. <laughs> and yes, he knew Sinatra, and, and he managed to say it in every goddamn sentence he ever said. Yeah. yeah. I knew Frank. Frank loved me. There was Frank in my front row. Frank always came to see me. I told Frank this. I told Frank that. I'm so f sick of hearing <laughs> about Frank Sinatra. Enough already. It made me want to tell Frank to go f himself. I mean, I don't know how to tell you this, Don, but Frank is dead. Coincidentally, dead is also the average age of your fans. I know you're going to do another number with the band because I know you've got a recording session tonight and uh, really on behalf of... Marco Mangananzo was hurt. <laughs> Marco Mangananzo. Fambino Bombazzo. <laughs> Two bullets in the head Thursday. I brought a friend. Who is your friend? That's why I came in. I've been I've been trying to set this up for ten years. What are you saying? Oh, yeah. wait a minute. I'm bringing a friend, Artie. Oh, this better be who I think it is. I'm bringing a friend, Artie. Who? Where is she? Can I predict? Who? Who I where, where is she? Dave it's, Coulier. Yeah, Dave good one. Coulier. Look, where Look is at she? The friend. <laughs> you got some music, I, uh, Fred? Do you have oh my goodness! Don Rickles, <laughs> ladies and Don gentlemen. Rickles. Don Rickles. Get up, the Benji. Man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's a real Wait, comedian. Give, give him a wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were just in a room full of hacks. <laughs> Mr. Rickles. That's what a real comedian looks like. <laughs> Mr. Rickles. The man works in a, in a closet, for Christ's <laughs> sake. <laughs>
Mr. Rickles, you don't have to give me a copy of your book. I'm already reading but it. But there's something in here about it to, that oh, you should read. Thank you. All right, I will read it. Uh, Don Rickles wrote a book. Yes. Don Rickles is my hero. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm, what am I getting? Gary, leave him alone. What the hell is this? Let him, sit, it? Let him sit down. What are you doing to him? Oh. <laughs> you hung out with Sinatra, Carson, all the big names. And did you feel you were at a low point in your life <laughs> when you had to do Artie's movie? No. Dirty work. This is. <laughs> John Stamos told me for years that he was friendly with you, and I'm going to be honest with you. you I didn't, didn't believe, believe him for a minute. <laughs> like, why would a guy of your intellectual ability yeah, my intellectual. And, and your com comedic ability, why would you... What do you see? What do you see in him? Because he's around for you to well, see. Well, he says, he says he wants to meet a wife, the girl, and settle down, but every time we go to dinner, Howard, it's, it's no joke. I mean, he really, they come over to the table and they're going, John, you'll call me, boy. And I said, what is that, Chuck? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I know nothing. I just want to have a nice meal and meet a nice girl. Oh, Does he goodness. tell you about his sex life? Does no, 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 no. No, he doesn't. No, he's very, very quiet about Are that. Are you jealous of his sex life ever? No, no, I had my chances. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, when I was his age, I wasn't laying around in the house with a Mormon book in my hand. When I read your book, Don, the Don Rickles book, yeah. and I'm reading it right now, mm -hmm. you paint yourself as a loser with women early on in your I was, life. You know, I, you know why? And I think maybe, I don't know if you had that problem when you were a young man. Oh, look at me. <laughs> no. What do you think my problem what are you was? Being kind? You look like a Jew Zulu. That's what you look like. <laughs> now, the greatest moment in that movie that you did with Artie is when you, I think you ad libbed it, you turned to him and you said, <laughs> So there you are, Tubby. Ah, you look like a bucket of lard on a bad day. You baby gorilla. Why don't you work a zoo and stop bothering people? Got a call yesterday from Baskin Robbins. They said that they're down to only five flavors. You're swelling up as I talk to you. You look at you, you baby gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, and you he, talk to the Baskin and Robbins yeah. in his stomach. Yeah. I love yeah. that. You address, Unbelievable. You address the food in his stomach, which I thought was a stroke of genius. <laughs> look at you. How's this? How's it doing? <laughs> Hello, ice cream. Having a good time? <laughs> Running around? <laughs> Uh, I love that. And, Artie, that was your single greatest moment. When well, it's the, my, the greatest moment in the history of my career. I not only told it on this show, I said the first time I ever do the David Letterman show, I'm going to get the segment producer in a headlock if he doesn't let me tell that story first. So I've told it here, and I've told it on Letterman. It's, uh, it it's is one a classic. The, it's, it's just, I got to be on the screen with one of the, the legends, man. Why are, you, why are you hollering up here? <laughs> <laughs> but you're a little older. <laughs> The first day of shooting, we have to work with the great Don Rickles. Tremendous. Okay. Just tremendous. Now, that's good and bad. I'm happy to meet him, but I'm afraid I'm just going to bust out laughing because Don Rickles, coincidentally enough, plays a guy who insults me and Norm. <laughs> <laughs> it's typecasting. And uh, they give Don a bunch of lines to learn, and that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a master at it. So finally, he couldn't really remember the lines. They say, Don, look, look at Norm and Artie, look at these two schlubs, and just insult them <laughs> off the top of your head. <laughs> so this is the first shot of the movie, and I got Don Rickles about to insult me. So uh, they yell action. The great Bob Saget directed the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Don, uh, Don had just finished Casino with Scorsese. Yeah. And he went up to Saget and he said, Bob, listen, I was talking to Martin Scorsese. I said, Marty, Bob Saget's directing a film. The man grabbed his chest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think about my motivation and everything. You know, right. If you're like you know, working with De Niro 20 minutes, he's got to go in the closet to figure out why. <laughs> why, why did I draw the gun? Why did I... <laughs> Why did I fire the pistol? Why? Uh, and I keep did. saying, Bob, huh? it's Thursday. Fire the gun. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that actor bullshit. Right. Right. So uh, then he gets, Rickles gets to Norm. He's laughing, so they had to write him a line. He goes, what are you laughing at? Because I called your friend the fat pig. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Because I called your friend the fat pig, huh? You think that's funny? Oh, no, I was just laughing uh, earlier when you were talking to his belly. Did you get a horse and live in the mountains someplace and don't bother anybody? Got a personality like a dead moth. <laughs> and then Norm goes, no, I was just laughing when you were talking to his belly. So while we're filming in the movie, he goes to Norm, he goes, how did you get a movie? <laughs> <laughs> and Saget goes, Saget being a brilliant director, goes, cut. Don, you can't insult him as Norm MacDonald. <laughs>
that's not going to work. You know, he's, we can't put it in the film. His, his name is Mitch in the film, and so Mitch. So Rickles goes, all right. And the next thing he goes, he goes, look at you. He goes, he goes, who wrote this script? These jokes are horrible. <laughs> Cut, Don, don't insult the script. <laughs> we can't use it. So anyway, it was 18 hours of that. At the end of the day, I went up to him. I said, Mr. Rickles, it was a pleasure working with you. And uh, he looked at me and he said, listen, I was watching you all day. And listen, let me tell you something. Good luck working construction. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, so Burt Lancaster rest as I was the same way when I did my first picture was Run Silent Run Deep. Mm -hmm. Here's a kid. I walk on the set, Clark Gable and Burt Lancaster. The first movie of my life. Never saw a movie. He knows about this. And the guy said, You write about it in your book. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's true. Yeah. But Burt Lancaster said that we're always on the side. He'd say, You know, Don, you kind of got to know what the submarine's are about. <laughs> know, what they, know why they die. Know why they come up. I'll do I said, Bert, I don't know. Listen to me. Do so I, said to, I said, so I said to Clark Gable, I said, uh, 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 Mr. Gable, he said, Colby Clark. I, I, I said, Clark, he, he's asking me about this. Said, Forget that crap. Just do the lines and we'll go and have a drink. That's right. That's right. That's right. Frank, I love you. <laughs> You spent a lot of time in your book on Sinatra. I mean, I, you really love this guy. Uh, very much so. Yeah, he People can't you. figure it out. People can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. why, he, why, did he, why did he not have you killed? I mean, you would say terrible, <laughs> terrible <laughs> things about him. I don't understand it. Because my manager at the time had other guys that could kill him. Yeah. Huh. That's good. But uh, you tell that great story. I mean, you probably told it a million times. But, you, you, but in the book, you, you write it very, very well. Well, thank you. The whole uh, Sinatra story about when you you know you your dating wasn't going so great yeah. you finally get a date with a girl <laughs> and then you're there at the club in Las Vegas you're eating dinner and uh, the girl turns and says I see Frank Sinatra over there do you think you could introduce me to Frank Sinatra and yeah. you did the most brilliant thing in the world listen can I tell a story about sure. what this man did to me once you may have known or heard about this it was a true story this is a long time ago long before Don got married I was eating dinner in a restaurant in New York, and uh, uh, I was with, with some friends, and he came over to the table, and he said, Frank, do me a favor, will you? He said, I'm sitting with a very pretty girl, and uh, I'm trying to make out, you know, and he said, I told her I know you, and she really doesn't believe me. Would you stop by the table? I said, all right. I was just about finished. I was down to the espresso, and I wa finally he went back, and I walked by the table, and I said, how are you, Don? Nice to see you. He said, can't you see I'm eating, Frank? What are you doing? <laughs> I went for the whole thing. You with my mouth all the, all the security was around. I said, Psst, Frank, can I talk to you a minute? And he said, there's Bullethead. He called me Bullethead. <laughs> she said, there's Bullethead. What is it? I said, Frank, if you could come over a couple of minutes and just say hi to me with the girl. It would skyrocket me. And <laughs> I, I got a good shot at hit a home run, you know? He right. said, you got it. But don't come over right away. So I went back, and I was giving her that cheap champagne, and we were going, to you, my darling, and her lips were dancing, and, you know, my body was <laughs> twingling, you know. And I tried to be cool, and I said, sweetheart, I just, don't worry about it, boom. And she said, look who's coming. And he, he, Frank struts over, had on this beautiful blazer in those days with, a, with an ascot, you know, he goes, Don, how are you? And I got up, I went, not now, Frank, can't you see I'm with somebody? <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't hit you. <laughs> He thought that he was great. He laughed his ass off, but he had the security guys lift me over their heads and carry me out of the casino. <laughs> the greatest story ever. Sure. Uh, because for me, and I'm getting all serious on you, but really, you are one of the biggest influences in my life. Oh, thank you, Howard. It really is true. I mean, uh, when, when I was a kid and I would sit and watch you on the Mike Douglas show specifically or... Uh, the Tonight Show, or Merv any Griffin, of those any of these shows. shows. Yeah. I, I, whenever I get to go on Letterman, I go, if I could be half as good as Don Rickles was, oh, I would always be entertained. A home run. I, I, I get the chills saying this to you because I never saw anybody come out there and be so entertaining. And Every I think time. That's why when I go on these talk shows, it is so important to me to be entertaining because I sat as a kid there next to my mother who was droning on about her problems <laughs> and then Don Rickles would come on and, and drown her out and make me laugh. <laughs> and it was so magnificent. It was the most beautiful symphony I've ever heard. Those well, you very kind of yeah, well, I... My next guest is one of the greatest comedians of all time. A legendary comedian, author, actor, and Mr. Potato Head. He's a two-time Emmy winner this year alone. The Merchant of Venom, the Czar of the Zinger. This year is poster child for rabies. Here is Mr. Warmth himself, Don Rickles, everybody.
to tell you something as a friend, really. Yes. With these two lovely Japanese girls, you made a fool of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, could I do it a couple of minutes? No! 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 no. That's no Give me a fun. break, I'm so lonely. <laughs> You don't have to laugh, just look at me and you know what I mean. <laughs> I, uh, I, I heard that you... Why is he sitting here? Does he have to clean up or something? No, no he... <laughs> he wanted to be out here. Oh, because... This is not your land, you crazy tongue, you're not going to have the land. You stupid man, you're not going to have the land. There's no good. This is not your land. You take... Huh. Oh, Carson's cigarette box. Oh, oh my God, this is I brought Carson's cigarette box. Carson's cigarette box. Oh, <laughs> what the hell happened to this? Do you know how long I've had the cigarette box on his desk? You brought that up from New York City? I brought this from New York. What on earth? It happened last night. Who? Don Rickles. I did not see the Don show Don Rickles last did it last night. Well, you put me on now. No, no. Don Rickles did it last night on the show. He's taping across the hall. CPO Shark. Can I get over there? Can I get over there? Be right back. Come on. Is he in studio? Are they taping? Are they on the air? I don't give a damn if they're on the air. Rickles, stop the taping. Somebody broke my cigarette box. I just started the show. I picked my box up off my desk that I've had for nine years. My box is broken. They told me, they told me you broke it on the show last night. Well, I, I, I really... I, 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 I. You get dumb. No, but I'm sorry about the box. Well, so I will, I. I, I will come up with something. Well, I hope so. But just keep me on your show. You mean so much to me. Can Surely. I... No, no, please. No, no, no. Don't, don't humble yourself. Please, I want to be with you so don't, bad. Don't humble yourself, brother. I want something back. Okay, okay. carry on. Help me, carry on. Let's see it. Johnny Clark, they know who I am. Okay, now, wait a minute. Why do, you, why do you always do that? Johnny Carson, they know who I am. Don Rickles. What is that? Please. No, you're a great guy, Don. You are. Not that we give a shit. You're more than a relic of that era. You're still doing it, and Don, you are as fresh and funny now as you were 50 years ago. There are millions of nice guys, hundreds of funny people, but there's only one Don Rickles. Mm -hmm. From my heart, on behalf of my wife, Barbara, and I, being part of Casino was a great treat. It was a Cadillac. You are a Cadillac. To me, that is the top of the industry. Wherever your wonderful mother is, who I loved and adored, as certainly you did in your family, she's watching and smiling on you. God give you the great strength and courage to continue your great work. You are special. Never forget that. You are special. God bless you, and I love you. Really, from my heart, this is a long night. <laughs> I look around this room, and this is the home of the blacks. And I see three. And I, uh, God bless you, black people. I love you. I really do. Uh, as you're laughing here, I'm sure one of you guys is up in my hotel room robbing me. From the bottom of my heart, I'm a Jewish kid from Jackson Heights, Long Island. And God, God gave me a big chance and I kept punching and punching away. And my mother stood in the kitchen of all these rough clubs and said, he's funny, he's a funny kid, you'll love him, you'll love him. <laughs> and to all of you, the love I've had, I wish for you. And I say for all of you that are here tonight, the main thing, may God give you health, health, and live a good life. And God bless you all, thank you.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for helping make this such a wonderful evening. Good night, everybody. I'll trade you laughter for love. I'll trade you one for the other. Laughter for love. What can you lose? Some madness for her. And for whatever it's worth, whether you like it or not, I'll give you all that I've got. I'll trade you sunlight for gold. One shines as bright as the other. Love is pure gold and laughter the sun. Life, this is my life. For all of my life. And you are part of this life. I live. I swear that it's true. I love to do what I do. To share this laughter I give For just a little love from you.